Are you looking for a way to use 3D Transform from the Stream Effects OBS plugin, but you just cannot install Stream Effects or you can't even find the download link for it? Don't worry. I have your back. I have undertaken the mighty quest to find all the best stream effects OBS alternatives. So if this is something you desperately need, you know what to do. Subscribe. The best alternative for stream effects is 3D transform that I have found is the corner pin shader from Exceldro. It's actually bundled in with his fork of shader filter by CERN. If you aren't already using this version, then I would highly recommend checking out my video on it as it comes with some out of this world shaders that you cannot get anywhere else. I'll bosh the link below. Downloading this is super easy. The easiest method is using our stream up plug installer. This downloads all of the best OBS plugins that we recommend and use in all of our stream up products. It's free to get and it just basically keeps everything up to date nice and easy rather than having to go to about a million different websites, right? Or if you want to do it the manual way, you can just download it from Excel Drove's guild page just here. And I would recommend just downloading the installer file, the .exe just here, click on it. And whilst you wait for it to download, obviously press that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of these crazy videos and all these tips to help you become a better content creator. So once you've got it downloaded, all you got to do is open it up. Once opened up, all you need to do is just select exactly where your OBS is installed, where your OBS-Studio folder is. Press next, 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 and you're all good to go. Jumping into OBS, you will see that I've got two sources. I've got a background image just here of my TV, and I'm like, oh, I want to put something cool on it, make it look nice. I don't know, put some sort of ticker bar on it. But I'm going to put this lovely image that I've got here on the TV. And obviously, most people think, right, could just turn it down, but I need to move it in 3D. Well, with this, you can. Nice and easy, okay? Whichever source that you do want to add this effect to, just literally right-click it, press filters, and then press the plus sign. Go to user divine shader, give it a name, so I'll just call it 3D for now. Press OK, and press load shader text from file. Press browse, and the one that we're looking for, you'll probably see there are so many different shaders in this version. It is insane. Again, go check out my video for more info. And then you can choose the corner pin shaders. There's two, there's either corner dash pin or corner underscore pin. I'm not too sure what the difference is, if I'm honest. And it'll load up just like this. It looks really complicated, and moving them bit by bit can be a bit annoying. But what we can do is use slider inputs. Now this is really nice. So I'm going to put this to one side just here and we're going to start manipulating this image. All you need to know is DR, down right, and then you've got X and Y. So whether or not it's the X coordinate or the Y coordinate. And that's the same for DL, down left. We've got TL, top left, and that's right, TR, top right. And then you've got the X and Y axis. So down right, X. So if we have a look in this bottom corner here, if I start moving this along, you can see it's moving. So I can put it in line with the TV just here and then I'll do the same with the Y and you'll probably see I actually need to move it down a little bit. What we can do is either make this source bigger by dragging it out and then adjusting it or we can actually add pixels to the outside. So if I go to the bottom here and say, I don't know, add 100 pixels to the bottom or maybe maybe a thousand. You can see I've made the canvas bigger now. So now when I move this down, I can actually see where it goes. So I'm going to line it up to this bottom corner just here. Obviously, remember, if you're wanting to get really in close and make sure that this looks perfect, then what you can do is hold down the space bar when you're on the canvas and this hand will come up that looks like this. And then you can scroll to zoom in and zoom out. And if you left click and move it around, you can move the canvas around as well. So I can zoom right into here to get it into this corner. So I'm going to start moving this along now a little bit. And if it's starting to, like, you just need it to move slightly, you can adjust these numbers manually. So if I just typed in 200, for instance, it'd move it to 200. I'm going to do the same just here to line it up roughly. And then I can move into a different corner. So I'm going to do, you remember what this one is? It's down left. So I'm going to move the X a little bit in because the TV's up there. And we're going to do the Y to bring it up. So I'm just doing this quite rushed at the minute and I can do the other two as well. And as you can see, I actually need some extra pixels at the top. So again, I can just do extra pixels at top and I'm just going to add 200. Now I'm going to move the top left across a little bit so it's in line and move the Y axis up. 
And now we've just got the last one, which is top right. Move it in a little bit like so and bring it down a little slice and boom. So I've done it quite quick. It's not perfect. And there you have it. You've got the 3D transform in there. You can also animate this using something like the Move Transition plugin from Exceldro as well. So we can add a Move Value filter. If I go back to the filter menu by right clicking Present Filters and add in a Move Value. And I'll just call this TV. Press OK. And the filter I'm going to adjust is the 3D filter that we created. I want to do multiple settings and I'm just going to press Get Value. And that was going to get every single value just there. I'm going to give it a little bit longer time so you can see it. So two seconds and leave everything else by default. I'm also going to duplicate it because I want to do pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to put reset. Now just call it reset for instance. And what I'm going to do is just set all these numbers back to zero to reset them. But I'm going to keep the extra pixels exactly where they were. So setting all these back to zero and it'll have the, the exact same settings that we set before. So it'll be two seconds long and everything like that. And check this out. I'll reset it. And now we've got it moving in 3D space. Sometimes it can get a little bit flashy, like you might have seen that little animation flash a little bit. That can be just to do with the different easing types. So certain settings don't like certain easing types. So just experiment with that. You might not actually want to use any easing. So just bear that in mind. Whilst I'm on this journey, I would like to know if there is a stream effects effect that you use that you are desperately trying to replace. Let me know in the comments so I can find you a solution. With this version of Shader Filter having so many more shaders in to sink your teeth into, I highly recommend finding out more in this video just here. Put your rock over the stone.